Welcome back to Shaw Spotlight and Pet Tips with Dr. Callie Thompson. Callie is a veterinarian at Northwestern Veterinary Hospital. Callie, today we're going to talk about something interesting and that's respiratory problems with your pets, like with cats and dogs. What kind of respiratory problems can cats and dogs get? Well, quite a few actually. Um, cats and dogs are sort of susceptible to the same respiratory tract issues as, as we are. So infections are, are a common one. Um, and we can see both uh, bacterial infections, like a bacterial pneumonia um, in, in both species. Um, and in our area, there's actually a fungal pneumonia known as blastomycosis. It's, it's been in the headlines a little bit lately on and off for the couple of years. Um, it's a fungal organism that essentially animals and people can get exposed to um, by disturbing soil where this, this fungus naturally occurs. Um, those spores are then inhaled and they set up shop in the lungs and they can cause a really serious infection for those pets. I've heard of that and then you think especially with dogs because they're always digging. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. think that that would be very prevalent in dogs. Yeah, we don't we definitely see it as much in cats, but dogs because of their behavior, they love to dig, they love to roll around in the dirt, they're much higher risk, yeah. What about a cold? Can a cat or dog get a cold? I know my cat has been sneezing and sneezing and sneezing. Is that the sign of something else or can they get a cold? Yeah, no, cats and dogs can get uh, colds, what we refer to colds, the same way as, as you and I can. And those are usually, um, they can be both viral or bacterial in origin. Um, I'd say most of the time we see a lot of viral upper respiratory tract infections. So really something that's getting down into the lungs that's causing a pneumonia, but that'll give us the common symptoms of a cold. So sometimes watery eyes, sneezing, sometimes even some nasal discharge um, and a bit of a cough. So yeah, that's, that's a common thing to see. Now I had a bit of a surprise with my cat. Um, a couple of years ago, she started coughing and coughing, and I just thought it was hairballs. I didn't know what it was, so I let it go, and then I noticed that she was becoming more and more lethargic, and she just wasn't herself, so I took her to the vet, and she was diagnosed with asthma. Yeah. Is that common? It's not uncommon, yeah. Um, it Essentially, cats like people can develop uh, inflammatory airway disease, um, and it tends to be triggered by allergens in the environment. So when that underlying inflammation is there and then those animals are exposed to daily allergens, whether it's dust or dust mites, um, outdoor allergens even, they get the same kind of bronchoconstriction and bronchospasm that people do when they have an asthma attack. Um, and it can be very serious and very concerning. So um, it's sort of new to a lot of people, they don't realize it. And cats seem to be more susceptible to do than dogs to that. Um, and treatment is really interesting as well. In <laughs> <laughs> yes, I found out that it was very it, it's it was very interesting. They told me I had to give my cat a puffer and I I think I must have had a look of shock on my face. I was like, how do you give a cat a puffer? But I had to buy this interesting thing yes. and it's called an arrow cat instead of an arrow right. chamber. And surprisingly, my cat takes it quite well. I bribe her with treats, but she takes it very very well. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful way to treat asthma in pets um, because what it what it helps us avoid mm -hmm. is that uh, one of the common medications we use for asthmatics is a steroid. And steroids have a lot of side effects and a lot of long-term effects. So what a puffer helps us do is it helps us distribute and expose the medication just to the lungs because that's ideally the only place we need it. We don't need it systemically throughout the rest of the body. And when we're able to do that, through attaching your standard puffer to your arrow cat or arrow dog, which also has the interesting sort of face mask adapter on the front, it allows us to get that medication into the lungs efficiently without those side effects and long-term risks of steroid use. And I know I was told that my my cat, our cats are smart and she will begin to realize that it's helping her so she won't fight it. And honestly, maybe she thought it was weird for the first little, little while, but she sits and takes it quite easily. It's, it never ceases to amaze me how um, how well animals accommodate to it. And I've had a couple of clients say the same thing that, you know, their pet almost will seek them out if they're having a coughing fit or feeling short of breath um, because they seem to make the association that that inhaler really helps them breathe better. Yeah, I found it very amazing. Now, when it comes to asthma, colds, pneumonia, um, any of the things you mentioned, how do you diagnose these things with, with cats and dogs? 
So it, it's tricky. Uh, some, some, th some things, sorry, are easier to diagnose probably than others. So um, getting your pet in for an examination is really important. So um, discussing with the vet what symptoms your pet is having, um, allowing your veterinarian to do a really good physical exam um, of the upper airway as well as the lower airway. So listening with a stethoscope to your lungs. Sometimes we can start to hear changes actually in the breathing patterns um, that help to suggest what we're dealing with. Um, and then from there, we usually like to do some blood work and some chest x-rays um, and also take some samples from the airways to send those away for culture or to try to identify whatever pathogen we think is causing this pet's respiratory tract problems. I know something that I did that I think was helpful was you can, I couldn't get my cat to cough when I was at the vet, veterinarian's office. So what I did was when she was coughing, I taped it on yes. my phone. And then I brought that in and I showed it to the veterinarian. And I think that was helpful because when I and when I Googled it, I saw a cat doing the exact same thing that my cat was doing. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> smartphones and, and the ability to actually get a video of the pet exhibiting the symptoms that the owner is concerned about um, really has helped us as veterinarians be able to make a much, much more accurate diagnosis. So sometimes a cat coughing can look very similar to a cat retching or trying to vomit. And depending on what your cat is actually doing really dictates where we need to go with that investigation and workup, right? So having a really clear picture of, is this what your cat's doing? Um, I'll a lot of times also direct clients to Google or to YouTube to look at videos of other animals exhibiting those symptoms. If they're not quite sure that what I'm trying to describe to them is what they're seeing in their pet. And that can be exceedingly helpful in us identifying what exact symptoms that pet has so we can figure out why it's happening. Now, what about treatment? How do you treat these, um, these ailments in cats and dogs? We know about the puffer, so what about all the yeah, other things? Yeah, so um, bacterial infections, things if, if we think you have a, a bacterial cold um, or or if we think you're struggling with pneumonia, that would be treated usually with oral antibiotics, the same way you know you or I would take oral antibiotics for a, for a period of time. Um, unfortunately, with viral infections, they've got to run their course. Um, so sometimes we'll use medication to help with the symptoms of the virus, but there's really not a lot we can do to expedite you know, removal of that virus from your system. Uh, going back to blastomycosis, which is a fungal organism, we have to treat that with antifungals. Uh, antibiotics don't help because it's not bacteria. Um, so that's a very long treatment in comparison to you know, your typical uh, bacterial pneumonia. Fungal pneumonias can sometimes be treated for up to a year. So it's a, it's a long haul to get those pets um, back on their feet. Yeah. Well, it's, it's good to know that your pets can actually get a lot of the same things that people can get as well. And I think look, watching for symptoms and if your cat's behaving or your dog's behaving weirdly, I think that's, a, that's kind of a sign because I noticed it right away. And I, it was funny because as soon as I gave my cat the puffer for a couple days, I noticed that she was like back to normal and completely, completely different cat. So I said she must have been pretty sick. So, you know, I think I wish I would have caught it a little earlier. Respiratory tract disease can be really, really serious in animals. Um, and so I think the take home message would be if you think your cat is having or dog is having any type of respiratory, breathing, coughing issues, we're way better to err on the side of caution and evaluate that sooner rather than later. Um, and the other good news is that most of those conditions are treatable with medications and the animals not only tolerate them really well as, as you've experienced Janice, but they, they thrive when the right treatment is started. Kelly, thanks so much for talking to us about this today. I look forward to uh, discussing more uh, pet tips with you in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Janice.